Hey YouTube, I'm back and this is the initial thoughts on this printer. A few weeks ago we did the live unboxing of the newer reel M18-S. Not sure what that name all stands for. Nothing in there is an 18 on this, but uh, the Amazon link also indicates that this is called a T-Rex. It strongly resembles a CR-10S Pro, you know, the display in the front and the way it's set up. Uh, of course, the ribbon cable, it also reminds me of the artillery sidewinder. It's an interesting printer. We had uh, some issues when we first did the live unboxing. We had a bent uh, carriage, so the bottom wheel was having a great deal of difficulty lining up and being able to move. Uh, we had a lot of wobble going on. So what I did is I stopped the live unboxing. I sent a message to the vendor and I said, this is what I'm up against. I have a few ideas how to fix it. What should I do? And to their credit, they wrote right back with a video link saying, here's how to fix it. Good job. So, and that's the way this printer has been. Uh, I've been printing with this thing for a couple weeks. I've got a few prints out here on the on the bed right now. Uh, I'm still fine tuning my Simplify 3D profile, but let me tell you all about the fun I've had with it. Let me tell you some things about the printer, what's going on under the lid, and you can make your own decision if you think it's worth it. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Paul and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit the button down below. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. And here we have the newer reel M18-S, as I mentioned in the intro. And first of all, let's get a few of the basics out of the way. Uh, as I may have mentioned in the intro, is that this was sent to me at no cost. They contacted me via email, said we have a printer we'd like you to review. I said, okay, sure. And uh, they sent the printer and I, uh, they've asked me if I've got my review done yet. I said, well, I'm still doing test prints. Uh, they asked if they could see the review before it goes out. I said, no, nah, I don't do that. So uh, they are the first ones seeing this just like you guys. I'm gonna be very honest what I like. I'll be very honest about what I don't like. That said, let me give you the basics of this printer. So the printer, the print volume is 310 by 310 by 400 and it is running a 32-bit control board. It has, it's a, uh, trying to remember the name of this thing right now, it is called, I have it on my screen in front of me, it is a MakerBase MKS Robin Nano version 1.2. I have no idea what that is. I'd never heard it before until I saw it when I opened up the electronics bag. And from what I can tell, it's just another one of those 32-bit boards, probably not as popular as some of the other boards, for example, like the SKR, SKR turbos, or the Creality boards, or what have you. It is running 2208 drivers, and for the printing and the movements and such like that, it's very quiet. However, the airflow that goes on inside this thing, the sound level is pretty much what you'd expect if you have a CR10 or one of those style printers with a big control box. I'll light this guy up so you can hear for yourself. So it's not obnoxious. It's probably a little louder than I was expecting, but it's not bad at all. Uh, on the side, we do have a USB port. We have our SD card. And on the very front, we have a touch screen and it's 3.5 inches and it's not bad. It's, it takes a little, uh, I'm a little new to the LCD screens. Let me turn that off. I'm a little new to the LCD screens and finding things and you know sometimes having to double tap to, to get what I want done. But after a couple of uses, you kind of figure out how to use it. While we're talking about the electronics, the power supply on this, when I had this open, I got a screenshot here I can share with you. Uh, it is a model P500W24V, so we're dealing with a 24 volt system. Uh, the website says it's 360 watts. Um, I'm not a big electronic expert. I'm guessing by that power supply sticker that's actually 500, but um, someone can correct me in the comment section down below. Moving around the printer, on the back over here, we have a dual lead screw, so uh, we have two Z-axis. Uh, the limit switches we have on the Y, we have an actual physical limit switch, and on Z and on X, it looks like those are optical ones, so impressive. Uh, we're dealing with a glass bed, and this glass bed is glued to the, uh, or adhered, or whatever verb you wish to use, uh, is stuck to the heated bed. So if you wish to, for example, remove this bed and use something else, say wham bam or easy plate or something, uh, you might be in for a fun little tug of war. A 
Besides the issue with the carriage, everything else arrived in really good shape. I didn't have to mess with too many of the belts. Uh, to adjust them, it's quite simple. I mean, there's a screw in the front where you can uh, move it fore or aft to tighten that uh, Y belt up. Uh, the X has been fine, so I haven't messed with it. I'm really curious about the longevity of these ribbon cables. I'm an IT guy, so I've been dealing with ribbon cables since the 90s, and they're not generally in used in moving parts. So I'm curious how these will work uh, over the long term. Uh, there was a spare ribbon cable in the package, so I don't know if that's gonna be for the uh, this control or that control, but uh, getting these off and back on is a simple little uh, uh, plug that holds them in. So that wasn't terrible. And moving on to the extruder, uh, I got some uh, pictures here I took, and you can see what it looks like with the cover off. And I'm not sure, someone mentioned Mark 9 to me. I've lost track of all these marks as far as what is what. But let me tell you what I do know. This is a, it has the filament sensor built in uh, to where it's a direct drive extruder. And from what you can see inside of here, uh, basically all you have is a hole to put the filament in. There is no way to adjust tension, it just, it, Maybe a spring load, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't find anything in there where you have any kind of adjustability. Now, it also has a, I mean, of course it's gonna be a clone, but it's a uh, E3D volcano style heater with a uh, 0.4 nozzle. And everything worked quite well with that and that, that, that setup. Um, I was looking around inside and I was trying to figure out if there was space or if there was any kind of direct support if I wanted to add, for example, a BL touch or a proximity sensor or something else, but I didn't see, thing, I didn't see anything right away. Uh, the part cooling fan, the duct looks like it's kind of aiming directly at the silicone sock and in some of the prints I did, I had some concerns wondering about the airflow, but it turns out that it's, it's working just fine, so I won't mess with that. And as I mentioned, the bed is a glass surface and like uh, usually the big question we have when we get these printers from overseas is how flat is the bed? Um, it does have an interactive, you go through each corner, you do the bed leveling. I mean, that's part of Marlin, but it's, it's a nice graphical interface they have. And I did find that even after I did a couple times around each corner, doing the center, I was still kind of high up. Uh, but one of the things that I've noticed is that when I am printing with this, when the print starts, I generally start my prints with about five layers of skirt. So that gives me a little opportunity to, before the print starts, to make sure that I'm you know, getting that perfect smoosh on that first layer. And I do know that when you start with the LCD screen, and of course with other printers as well, you have the ability to baby step. So what I've been doing is as needed, I'll go in there and I'll baby step. In this case, I need to get the nozzle a little bit closer to the bed. So I've been doing Z negative. And I've only had to tap that a couple times. And most of my prints have come out great. Uh, getting them off the surface hasn't been too terrible. I just let them cool, wait a few hours, and then they pop right off. And other than that, I mean, most of the things that I have printed, you can see that I've been using ColorFab, uh, PLA, PHA, and I, I really like that material. And on these prints, you can see that uh, overall, they've been very good. You can see on my retraction test and on my uh, mini cal test here, uh, I need to work on my retraction settings. I'm still working on my Simplify 3D profile. Uh, they didn't offer me a whole lot of guidance. Um, like a lot of these manufacturers, they always recommend Cura 15.4, you know, the one that was out three years ago. But uh, as you can see with my Benchy, that came out in my opinion for, like I said, that was literally the third print off this printer. Uh, I did a little calibration cube. Uh, I did my uh, extrusion multiplier to make sure I wasn't over or under extruding. And then I did another one to verify. And like I said, these prints have been coming out very good. And this is a printer that's just, I don't know anything about, you know? And it's it's been fun to dial in. It's been fun to try things out with it. Um, just for the heck of it, around, uh, around Halloween, I saw that there was a baby Yoda holding a pumpkin. And I thought, geez, I've only done a couple prints on this thing. This print has a lot of supports. Let's see how it does. And as you can see in the photos, it did a great job. I was totally blown away. I did not expect that. So this mystery printer of what I don't know a lot about has surprised me and it is continuing to do really good prints. And while I'm thinking of it, there was another thing that these guys have done with their printer that I thought was interesting is that where the, uh, the wiring plugs into the bed is an actual connector. So 
you know, some of these printers that we've got from overseas, you just have the soldered wires and kind of as an afterthought, you, the owner, has to find like strain relief or stuff like that. And this one, as, as you can see here, has, it reminds me, if you've been building computers since the uh, 90s or so, uh, it reminds me of the old style connectors that would plug into a motherboard, you know, from the power supply. And it, it's doing a very good job holding everything in place and I don't feel a need to have to mess with that. So how much? Currently, it's on Amazon for $459.99. And like I said, I'm gonna have an affiliate link down below. So if you decide to purchase the printer, uh, that will benefit uh, me and the channel. So thank you very much. Every little bit helps. I'm hoping that the vendor will get back to me with a coupon code. I'm not sure how much, but do check the description to see if they are for one. And yeah, so I'm gonna keep on doing some prints with this. I wanna do bigger prints. And like I said, so far I have been pleasantly surprised. This has been a very good printer. Uh, I have not had any issues outside of that initial issue with the carriage. So there you have it. So if you like what I'm doing here and you wanna see other things I'm working on, check out my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And yeah, if you uh, enjoy the channel and if you haven't already done so, subscribe, like, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Okay, and now that fabulous blooper reel that everyone loves. There's literally a cat here hanging right there. Okay, there we go. Very good ones, and I'm gonna tell you all I can't talk. They accepted knowing those rules. I can't get my flow today. Sent me an email saying, hey, we'd like you to try this video out. Um, <laughs> you want to try this video out. Man, there are days I feel like I should do a script and there are days where I probably wouldn't do that right. One more try. Five, four. The, um, uh, why can't I say stuff straight the first time? Well, right now, the printer is for sale on Amazon.com for $459.99. So, let's just say 459 happened uh, if you do just uh, if you do decide to purchase one of these printers as you use, using the Amazon why is the Amazon killing me today mm -hmm. aside is the issue